Hey, we are- ladies and gentlemen, UFC welterweight champion Tyron Woodley joins the Believe in Me podcast. Only because my homie that got hands that know we out here can call me on the day of and get this interview. <laughs> <laughs> the what? What's up, my brother? Hey, we first and here. foremost, we out here. We out here. We always say that's Tyron's little saying. Tyron, first and foremost, on behalf of everyone at the Believe You Me podcast, well done, man. That was fucking amazing. Well, I appreciate that, my man, for sure. And you had it right, man. As I told you earlier, you know, um, one thing that you can count on me is being real. I don't be real 100% of the time. Some people like it, some people don't. I was a little bit nervous, and I think you as a fighter, as a, as a champion, you can recognize it. You looked a little bit nervous, and I was. I was I was carrying a lot in that fight, not only just the victory itself, not only what comes after the victory, but it's a lot of people I'm feeding, a lot of people that are relying on me, and a lot of adversity, a lot of weapons that were formed against me. And I don't know what to say in and, and the blueprint and the, the writing on the wall and the storyline, Looks almost to be as if they were grooming this young man to do a Conor McGregor, but not on my watch. Not today. You, what, what? Not never. <laughs> well, fair enough. And, and, and you're right, Tyron. I mean, going into that fight, I mean, of course they're trying to build. Ty, uh, sorry, they're trying to build Darren Till. Everyone knows who you are. So you could argue that they were just trying to build him and give you a worthy opponent and help with the pay-per-view sales. But he did seem to get the bulk of the marketing going into that fight. And, uh, you know, you're bound to be nervous. I mean, that was another title defense. Winning world titles is not an easy thing, but you've done that four times now. Congratulations. It's incredible. I guess um, well, we'll, get into the, we'll, we'll get into the next fight soon, but what did you do Saturday night after you won the belt? What happened? Talk us through the uh, the celebrations. You know, I didn't. I didn't even bring nothing to go on in um, Disney. I didn't even bring no clothes, like to step out to the nightclub. I expected to win, and I just really wanted to chill out with my family members. You know, eat the pizza and just relax a little bit. So I didn't go ham. I didn't do. You know, I didn't turn up because I expected to win. Yep. Was there? You know, that, that was the thing, you know, kind of going into the fight, people were, um, I, I don't know what the questions were, but there was a lot of talk about, is Tyron fighting safer? You know, we saw performances with you um, against Wonder Boy and Damian Maya, and um, kind of similar to almost George St. Pierre, which has been a lot of comparisons to with you and GSP, um, is Tyron kind of taking it safer, and is he kind of putting together game plans to, um, you know, just keep the title? Were you trying to make any sort of statement on Saturday night or did it just, it just happened the way it happened? You know, I was forced to use new tools. I had to tore my right leg up. That was my money maker. Can you guys hear me okay? Is it, is it coming through clear for you guys? Yeah. yeah, we can hear you good. Yeah, yeah, we're good. Okay, cause, cause let me let me take it off my Bluetooth. It's coming back choppy to me, but I um, I can hear you guys clear. That's better. You, you sound silky smooth, Tyron, just like you're fucking boxing. Okay, all right. Well, I just, I'll just ignore it as long as you guys can hear me clear. But, yeah, um, I had to work on new tools, jabbing high, using my left hand more, left hooks, punching to the body, throwing kicks, moving. Um, you know, I know if I was planning to fight myself and I was there until, which is the way I make all my game plans, bullying him, push him back, get his back against the octagon, use range, very similar to where McDonald did. If he tried to blitz in quick, and be explosive, move out of the way. Weather the storm early, look and see if you get him in the fourth or fifth round, and then at that point, then try to, you know, roll the dice. That's what I would think that he, it, his, team, his team people would say to him. So I was forced to it, use other tools. But if you look at the opposite end of the coin on what people say, when they say you fight smart or you're fighting safe, do they want you to fight stupid and they want you to fight unsafe? They want you to be reckless, yep. and they want you to fight illiterate. That's the opposite of fighting smart and fighting safe. So just think about how that sounds. Who on, who on her freaking earth would want to do that? I always fight for the finish. Does the finish always come? No. Sometimes you got to be patient and create those openings. And Wonder Boy, I got very few openings. You know, he's just very hard to hit. He's long. He's, he's a lot quicker than what he looks like. I mean, um, you know, film. And then I got those opportunities. When I got those opportunities, I went for the kill. And it was actually in the later rounds. Same thing with, with Damian Maia. It's, it's very hard to knock somebody out 
that's consistently on your legs, grabbing the, and going for a takedown to put them in their best position. Every fight I've ever fought in my life, I never went out there and said, let me win this by close decision. I've always thought, knock this motherfucker out. Try to submit him. Try to hurt him. It's always not what I think. But you have to. You, when you're trying to create a legacy and you're trying to, you know, reign over a very, a very difficult division, you got to be smart with the way you try to finish. Not play it smart. Not play it safe. Be smart in the way you go for the finish. Totally agree. And in fact, that's what I said of Fox at the weekend. I mean, they asked me to describe your uh, title reign so far. And I said, listen, it's been methodical because you've fought two specialists that are very difficult people to fight. You can't just go out there swinging like crazy, fighting like a moron trying to get the finish. you gotta, you got to be careful. you got to pick the openings, and that's what you did. I think that Darren was a victim uh, of, of his own timidness. And then in the second round, he thought he was under pressure to come forward and be aggressive because he hadn't thrown much. Cause I think he was worried about your wrestling, but then when he ran in, he ran straight onto uh, the right hand. So, you know I mean? And that was the beginning of the end, but how did you feel about his uh, takedown defense? The first round, you got double underhooks and you weren't able to get him down. Did that concern you at all? No, I didn't concern me. You know, he, I didn't actually drive him to the octagon. Mike, he pulled himself to the octagon. He basically won the do two against one. Octagon and himself both defending the takedown. So I expected sure. him to, you know, try to keep position. You know, most other guys he would have been aggressive with, overhooking, looking to throw elbows. He knew at that point any opening I was going to get for the takedown. It didn't make a lot of sense for me to jump down on his legs and let him extend and stretch me out. Then he would have started throwing those strikes. So I saw when he threw his punches, he really throws his whole body. He's kind of light in the ass. He get really straight up and down. So I knew it would be an opportunity for me to do a leg hook, a leg trip, but I also recognize he had some great balance and had a lot of height. And if it came down to the difference between me taking him down and him getting warm from grabbing the cage, I knew he would grab the cage. So I just I, I, I locked up the body lock. I did, you know, what I needed to do, kept the uh, distance close. Um, I knew if I was going to be able to get the takedown, but if not, no worries. I was still, still going to try to outstrike him anyway. And also in the first round, do you think that the referee separated you guys early? Yeah, he did, but let's, I mean, yeah. this, this is the thing. That was bullshit, Tyron. That was scenario. bullshit. Yeah. I've lost focus like that before where, you know, I was in a fight and I fought Nate Marquardt. I knocked him down and, my God, did I throw 20 punches in a row. I took one break after throwing 20 punches after knocking him down and nearly sending him to Jesus. And they broke it up right then. And it, it, it makes me like, what the hell, man? You know what? Now I got I did all the work. Now he gets to get up fresh. So I just told myself that hey, he broke it up. Whatever. Go right back to the game plan. Get back on the game plan. That's what I just kept telling myself. So of course now everybody's looking to see what's next. I mean, you just finished an amazing fight at the weekend. People should give you some time, really. But everyone wants to know GSP, Colby Covington. You got lots of choices. Maybe a Nick Diaz. The one that everyone obviously. He's mentioning is Colby Covington, and I'm sure you're sick of answering this question, Tyron. So my bad. I'm fucking sorry, man. But uh, what have you got to say to Colby <laughs> Covington right now? You know what? I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not mad at the question because I can tell you why. Everybody wants to see me whoop his ass. That's <laughs> it. Yep. Oh, me too, buddy. He's a complete douchebag, and he, he he's 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 irritated so many different types of people. Black, white, political, Brazilian, um, you know, homosexual, yep. people that, yep. you know, believe in Star Wars. Any any person you can think of, <laughs> he's a thank you, my man. Thank you. <laughs> he, he, he just hey, annoyed every and those, type of person. Hey, so now everybody wants to see me with his ass. And the thing is, and those Star Wars fans, they don't fuck about. Up than he. Usman is a tougher matchup than he. He's not even the best matchup for me. Like so, it's like, like he he asked for the fight, got the fight, and then bitched out. It's kind of like, dude, get out of here. Hmm. And what about? Uh, but to answer the question, I will fight him though. Is he the next? Is he the next guy on the horizon, or is there anybody else that you would rather fight in a perfect world right now? They come to you and say, "Who's your Who's your opponent that you want? Who's the guy you prefer to say that?" I don't know what world. 
world you've been in, but they don't do that with me. If <laughs> I talk about fighting somebody, or if I talk about what card I want to fight on, fans is not fucking with it at all. So therefore, I'm so, taking a new stand. Put them in front of me and get their ass whooped. That's wow. That's so great. what about November 30th? I can't do it, Madison man. You know, I, I, I wanted to go up in middleweight and challenge the great Bisbing. I wanted to fight freaking GSP. I wanted to fight Nate. I wanted to fight Nick. Anybody I mentioned, I got tortured. I mean, not only by the promotion, yeah. but also by the fans. And I, I was asking for fights that I thought were good career fights because these people that I wanted to fight, in my mind, are people that I looked up to that were legendary. Right. And those guys were Hall of Famers. And I thought I needed to well, fight those guys to become on their level. But I guess well, for honestly, my path not- to be able to go, that's not it. Well, I think now, Tyron, you're definitely in discussion for one of the greatest of all time. Certainly, I think at welterweight, it's you and GSP. I mean, that was already set in stone. Um, but after after the week, I mean, that was an incredible performance. It was unbelievable. So can we, what about November 30th, Madison Square Garden? Is that too soon for you and Cole? Because that's the date no, that he's I, saying. I'm, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that card. I mean, I, my manager was calling me as I, as I started this interview, so I don't know if he has some information about a fight, so... Um, if he if he um, if he tells me something when I hop off the line with you guys, I shoot you a message to show you I know. All right. I don't I don't know for sure. I'm just not in the business of okay. saying no right now, man. No, I'm I'm at no, a point right sure. now where I feel good. I'm glad to be back. I just don't think none of these welterweights have anything for me. Um, I respect everybody. I train like I train for the worst case scenario, but when it comes when it comes to um, this game of mixed martial arts. I, I just take it way too seriously. You know, I'm, I'm in it. I'm in it for the right reasons. And it's going to be very difficult to beat me. You you had mentioned uh, the welterweights not having much for you, and you had also mentioned possibly, you know, in the past talking about going up and fighting Bisping. Is that something that still interests you in the future? Um, possibly moving up. It's, it we're in a, it seems to be a new time. I'm sorry. So I'm at the carpool, grab my kids. But um, no, it's okay. So I, I, I would definitely. Especially, especially when you got the, the the current middleweight guys that are fighting for a title, are both oversized welterweights. You know what mm. I mean? Yep. Already beat Kelvin, Robert Whitaker. You know the tough stud. He had two good fights with Yoel Romero, but he lost a Wonder Boy guy, a, a guy that I fought a couple mm-hmm. times. So yeah, um, I was you know right now I'm just I love the game of mixed martial arts. I love where it's at. I love what I see when I watch you know when I watch it. Zabib and freaking, um, you know, Al Jermaine pulling out these crazy-ass submissions. Tatiana Suarez completely, you know, I heard I heard Carla was throwing up in a hospital from concussion just from the amount of abuse she took. So I'm just excited mm-hmm. to be at the top of the uh, food chain during this moment. And whoever they put in front of me, man, I just want to keep, I want to do better and better and better and be more dominant and dominant every single time. And um, that's all I'm focused on. I mean, I'll, get, I'll eventually get that fight everybody wanted me to get. You know what I mean? That big fight. But I, I just can't call for it myself. The fans will do it for me, and when they do it, then I'll step up and I'll, I'll, I'll rise to the occasion. Well, well, I'll say this right now. I definitely sign off on you versus the winner of Gastelum and Whitaker because, as you said, you've beaten Gastelum already. Whitaker was a welterweight, so it totally makes sense. I know you're busy. Uh, you're very gracious with your time, Tyron. So we'll let you go in a second. Finally, let's uh, speak about something uh, a bit more uh, upbeat and lighthearted. Your rap album, your song debuts. I mean, is is that released yet with Wiz Khalifa? We we drop it on Friday, man. We're gonna do a couple. We're gonna do a sneak peek of it earlier this week. But the world premiere of it is going to be Friday. It's a track entitled. I'll beat your ass, and after this weekend, I don't think nobody's going to disagree with me <laughs> that I will beat your ass. <laughs> so it's featuring um, artist T-Dubbo and also Wiz Khalifa. I've I, I, I sampled it around to a lot of different DJs, record um, labels, and his ex. Everybody's completely crazy about this song. It's going to go ham. So make sure you guys check out I'll Beat Your Ass, T-Dubbo, Wiz Khalifa. It's hitting every platform on Friday. Sweet. And what about the acting tower and anything else on the horizon there? Yeah, you know, it's funny. I just got an offer for for, for a role today that I'm going to accept. I can't talk about it yet. But it's, um, Sick. I got an offer for a role today. So, um, 
So yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna accept that, and uh, yeah, I'm gonna get it cracking. Beautiful. Beautiful, man. Well, listen, once again, thanks for joining us, Taron. I really appreciate it, buddy. Uh, congrats again at the weekend. All the best. No doubt. See you soon. All right, let's talk about one of our great new sponsors on the show, which is Mint Mobile. Um, the big and big wireless provider stands for a lot of things, Mike. Big contracts, big bills, big fees. What Big Wireless doesn't want you to know is that there is a way to cut your wireless bill down to just 15 bucks a month with Mint Mobile. Mint Mobile has taken everything wrong with Big Wireless and made it right. With Mint Mobile, you can save over $1,000 a year without sacrificing quality. Yes, Mint Mobile makes it easy to cut your wireless bill down to just 15 bucks a month. Very, very cheap. Use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and keep your old number along with all of your contacts. Choose between two, five, or 10 gigabyte 4G LTE plans. No more paying for unlimited data that you're never going to use. And if you're not 100% satisfied, Mint Mobile have you covered with their seven day money back guarantee. So, realistically, you know, if those bills are piling up every month, here's your solution. Here's your yeah. answer. You I switched. Mint Mobile. You did? Oh, I, tell I us, did. please. I, dude, I made the switch, okay, because we were doing the reads with them, and I ended up t speaking to the people at Mint Mobile, and they're super cool. First of all, really cool company, and the idea here, it's almost like we, we talked about this before. There's no retail location, so there's no overhead with rent. There's nothing like that. They're not specializing in you know having cell phones, so they don't have this crazy inventory stocked. So basically, the savings are passed on to you, and if you check the amount of data you use, you're not using a crazy amount of data. Most people are using around five gigs a month. 10 gigs is more than most people. You can actually check and see how much you're using. So the whole idea of unlimited data, it's sort of a farce. We're paying for a bunch of stuff we don't need, and they figured out a way to cut it down to 15 bucks a month. I'm telling you right now, I'm putting a little bit of money every single week away. I'm taking my kid on a nice vacation next year just with the money that I'm saving on Mint Mobile, which is awesome. And you can use your own existing phone as long as it's unlocked, or they do actually sell phones as well. Um, so whatever you want to do, iPhone, Android, however you want to do it, also, so you know, it's not like it's this crappy service. They're using the same. I, I don't want to point out the the company's you know uh, lines that they use, but they they're using the polls from one of the big companies. So you're getting the same quality service as you would for another big company. You're just not paying all the BS and all the middleman crap. So. This is the way you can get involved, Mike. Yeah, no, for sure. To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month, plus free shipping on your Mint Mobile SIM card. Very simple. Go to mintmobile.com slash believe. That is mintmobile.com slash believe. Cut your wireless bill to just 15 bucks a month and get free shipping on your Mint Mobile SIM card at mintmobile.com slash believe.